talk about solving linear equations with one variable and how this information could be useful. All right, first let's start with a problem you may have seen before. It has one variable here, x, and we've learned how to solve these before. So the first thing I'm going to do is to try and combine x and x plus 10. Now, easier said than done, because I have a fraction over here, so what I'm going to do is multiply the whole thing by 10. Now what that's going to do is what I magically want to have happen, and that is to get rid of the fraction. Now this, uh, is, this becomes a lot easier to combine. I get 11x equals 440. And then to isolate the variable, I divide both sides by 11. And then I get 440 divided by 11, which leaves me with 40. Similarly, I suppose you could have changed these and made them both fractions and then done the simplification at the end. But I like my first step to be that of getting rid of the fractions. Let's go ahead and take a look at a different example. I have 0 0.6 times 1 parentheses times in parentheses 1 minus x plus 0 0.2 times in parentheses x minus 5 equals 10. What you see here is that starting with the problem, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this out so I get 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6x. And I have 0 0.2, again using the distributive property here, I have plus 0 0.2x. 0 0.2 times 5 is 1, so that's a negative 1 equals 10. I'm going to combine my like terms. I have 0, negative 0 0.6x and a positive 0 0.2x. That's going to get me a negative 0.4x. Then I'm going to compi combine 0 0.6 and negative 1, and that's going to leave me with negative 0 0.4, and that's going to equal 10. So again, dealing with decimals um, is very similar to dealing with fractions. What I can do, and you certainly don't have to do this, you can go ahead and bust out your calculator and find the answer, but since I am currently operating in a calculator-free zone, I'm going to multiply everything by 10, and what I end up with is a negative 4x minus 4 equals 100. Again, now working to isolate the variable, I have negative 4x equals 104. Divide by negative 4, and x equals negative 26. All right, so solving for one variable. Um, how about some situations in which it could be useful? Well, let's say you haven't memorized um, your repeating decimals. And maybe it's a good idea to have, you know, to be able to look at this and say, oh, I know exactly what fraction this represents. But we'll pretend you don't. I can write the decimal 0 0.16 as a fraction. So first thing I'm going to do is say, all right, well, let me say that, let's just say x equals 0 0.16 repeating. And what I'm going to do then is say, well, that means 10x equals 1.666 repeating. We're going to have to write out all those sixes. But what we'll see is then if I want to go ahead and set this up as a problem, I will get 10x minus x equals 1.66666 repeating minus 0 0.16666666 repeating, which then gets me all those repeating sixes are essentially going to cancel themselves out, and I'm going to be left with 9x equals 1.5, at which point then I would divide both sides by 9, and I get x equals 1.5 
over 9, which technically isn't really the kind of fraction we're looking for. But I can go ahead and simplify that. That 1.5 over 9 equals 3 over 18. I've gotten rid of that decimal, but I know 3 18 equals 1 6. So in essence, what I've done is used a linear equation to solve for the fact that 0 0.16 repeating equals 1 6. Again, also, some of you are pretty good memorizers, and it probably wouldn't be hurtful to memorize some common repeating fractions because they come up often in the math that we work with. How about another example? Oh, here we go. A packager of tea leaves blends 3.5 pounds of tea leaf A with 1.5 pounds of tea leaf B to make a special blend. One pound of tea leaf B costs two dollars less than one pound of tea leaf A. The packager finds that the cost of making the blend is three dollars per pound. Find the cost of one pound of tea leaf B. So here's how I'm going to work it. I want to find what one pound of tea leaf B equals. So I'm going to say leaf B is X because that's ultimately the solution I'm looking for which then means tea leaf A is going to be X plus 2. Since tea leaf A is more expensive than B by two dollars and I got that information here. One pound of tea leaf B costs two dollars less. So that makes it the more expensive. Now there's some other information in here. The packager finds that the cost of making the blend is three dollars per pound. But we also know how many total pounds are being made. Because we have 3.5 pounds of tea leaf A and 1.5 pounds of tea leaf B. So total, that's five pounds. That's five pounds at three dollars a pound. Which then tells us, since we're looking for cost, the total cost is going to be $15. So now I have enough to set up my equation. I have 3.5 tea leaf A, which costs x plus 2, because I don't exactly know the cost, plus 1.5 pounds of leaf B. That's really what I'm looking for. And when I combine those two together, I get a total of $15. All right, using the distributive property here, yields us 3.5x plus 7 plus 1.5x equals 15. I combine my like terms, 3.5 and 1.5x. So I now have 5x plus 7 equals 15. Subtract 7 from both sides, working to isolate the variable. 5x equals 8 divided by 5. x equals 8 fifths. Well, that's cool and all, but I'm looking for money since I want to find the cost. So, let's say maybe I'm not so good with fractions. Um, I could go ahead and divide this out in my calculator, or I could see that 8 fifths equals 16 tenths, and 16 tenths equals 1.6. And since I'm dealing with dollars, T leaf B. costs one dollar and sixty cents which is what I'm looking for. Had you worked with leaf A as your x then leaf B would have been x minus two just keep that in mind and then when you solved for x you would have actually been solving for leaf A at which point you would have had to subtract to find your answer. All right. <laughs>